wants to be king! I think one of the key components in dealing with things as a man is being able to analyze things and dissect them from the inside out. What I mean by that is, whenever you're dealing with things in life, especially when you see things that you don't particularly like, or certain, certain elements of a person's presence rubs you a certain kind of way, before you look at that person and start judging that person, I think it's really important that you ask yourself, what is it about me that I see in this person that bothers me so much. There's an old saying, if you spot it, you got it. And basically that's what that saying, the thing that annoys you the most about another person, a lot of times that's something that you exhibit or something that you hide from yourself about yourself. In the initial video that I made about Andrew Tate, it was in response to some young men asking me if I thought that he was a good role model for men. And as I said many times before, I don't know him. And my assessment unfairly was based off of the snippets, the clips of videos. The, the long form videos have always been hacked up and whatever the creator, the influencer, whatever you wanna call the procurer of the video, whatever their echo chamber required, that's the part of Andrew Tate that was that was delivered. So if they were pro Tate, it was something that was inspirational. If they were anti Andrew Tate, it was something that was a little bit cringy. And I think the things that were inspirational, most people agree with those things. The things that were cringy, even, even men look at those things and say, I hear the message, but the delivery is a little bit juvenile. But in, the mess, in that message, my overall, my overall opinion was because of his materialistic view on things and because of his narcissistic personality that he portrays to the people that, that subscribe to him, that follow him, I thought that that was a negative thing. And I still don't, I don't, I don't support that. But I had to ask myself, what, what is it about that that bothers you so much? And the thing about getting older is as you get older in life, you, you look back on the previous decade or decades of your life and you realize that you really didn't know as much as you thought you did at the time. And oftentimes when you reach the, the age that I'm at now, you look back at your 30s, your 40s, you look at, you look at where you have been and you realize that you didn't know shit at all. And sometimes you're a little bit embarrassed about how you showed up and what you what you did in order to maintain this persona that you believe that you were at that time. In that anal in, in that analysis, I realized that my opinion of Andrew Tate isn't isn't really rooted in anything that has to do with him not even really his message. And the reason why I say, I think the reason why I said that that mindset was toxic, it was a projection of my own personal experience in, in embracing the hustle mentality. When I listen to Andrew Tate, I'm, I, I hear more similarities than I, than I do discrepancies. And a lot of what he says that I don't agree with is merely based on delivery. When you shed when you shed all of the outer skin and get to the core of his message, I'm basically saying the same thing. We have the same belief system about most things. The difference is the materialistic idea of success and the self-massage, the, the constant egotistical bragging. The way I was raised is you don't brag about yourself. You don't tell other people how smart you are, how good you are. You don't tell people, you don't tell people about yourself. You simply, you simply execute 
Whatever it is that you are, you let people talk about you. You let people talk about how smart you are, how, how athletic you are, how badass you are. I wasn't raised to brag about myself. I wasn't raised to crave the spotlight. But some people are. Some people, some people move that way. And that hustle mentality, that, that hustler's mentality, that was something that was part of my DNA all the way up until my brother died. You see, my, my opinion about Andrew Tate is very much tainted because I lost my brother in our pursuit for wealth. And coming up poor and making the decisions that we made to, to never experience that poverty again, we crossed a lot of lines. And in doing so, my brother, my brother got himself in a situation where at 45 years old, he was gonna have to go back to the penitentiary. And circumstances, circumstances led to an event where he got on a dirt bike, drunk, and ran into a telephone pole, broke his neck. In that moment, in that moment, prior to that moment, the only thing that mattered was attaining a, a certain number that would allow life to be lived at a, at a level of comfort until projected expiration date. And that was, the, that was the sole focus. The sole focus was being able to live freely and live well. And after he passed away, none of that mattered. None of that mattered. Those of us who knew him would have given up everything to have him back. And I realized that that is why, that is why I look at Andrew Tate's message and say that it might, it, that it might be harmful to young men. But in looking at, looking at this thing further, as I said before, my opinion of Andrew was based on little clips that were made to incite whatever emotion that you felt. And that's the culture that we live in. That's the culture that he has taken advantage of and projected himself into the stratosphere of popularity. And so when I, when I look at this situation and look at how they started attacking him, I had to, I, I had to get more intel about who this man was. And so I sat down and watched the interview with, with Andrew and Anthony Johnson at 21. And when I finished watching that video, I, I came away with that, with a slightly different view of who Andrew Tate is. For, for all the distasteful things that he says, he's, he's correct about 99% of the things that he says. And the problem is the people who think that, the people who believe that they're being championed by the pullers of the strings seeking to censor him are simply useful idiots like the people that are looting and rioting in the name of equity and all this bullshit. These people are being allowed to, they're being allowed to do what they're be, what they're doing. They're being allowed to destroy this country because they're destabilizing forces. They're reliably destabilizing forces. Feminism, the civil rights movement, all the, the, the alphabet community, the new transformers, all of those communities are highly sensitive, volatile communities that have been used to destroy this country since the 50s. And that's what we're doing again. And so this system that's attacking him wishes to reverse all of the things that made America strong. Andrew Tate stands for everything that made America strong. And the biggest problem is, isn't that he's speaking 
badly about women. It isn't anything that he says about women, although women have taken up this cause because he speaks the truth. He tells the truth about what most men think about modern women. And because they don't like it, he needs to be silenced instead of looking in the mirror and saying, we've been lied to, the system tricked us. They wanna vilify him because what they're doing is fun and it's painful to look in the mirror. It's painful to check oneself and realize that you are the creator of your own hell. But it isn't that message that's so threatening because if they were really, if they were really worried about women, and I'm talking about real women, biological women who can have children, not this weird fruitcake, lunatic asylum shit we have, I'm talking about biological women, if they really cared about those women, we wouldn't have to have this conversation. We wouldn't have to have to justify or, or quantify what we meant as a woman. It would just be simple. It's not about science, it's about life. Men, women, two genders. If they really cared about that, they wouldn't have William Thomas slinging his wiener around the female locker room, dominating women. They wouldn't allow men to simply put a wig on and some rouge on their face and put a sports bra on and get in a ring and beat the shit out of women. If they really cared about women, they wouldn't be allowing all of this shit. They wouldn't allow these sick men to invade their space. So to believe that this, this taking down of Andrew Tate is because he's, he's dangerous to, to little boys because of the way that they're gonna treat women they don't care about women. They don't care about women at all. If they did, they would check the women that are sitting there poisoning the young girls, talking about how terrible and horrible men are and how they don't need a man because they can become one themselves and do the very things that have made them unhappy. This cycle of stupidity is outlandish. And that's what he points out. And all of the useful idiots that he speaks about get their pitchforks and their, their signs and they light a fire, but they desperately do not want to see a mirror. Do not show me a mirror. Do not tell me that it's my fault, that it's my responsibility, that I can change. I need somebody to come do it for me. And there's a lot of those dummies that run this system now. And those are the people that are being, those are the people that are being appeased. Those are the people that are being listened to. But the real problem isn't that he says things about women. It isn't, it isn't the misogynistic views or any of that. The real threat, the real threat is the same threat that Elliot Hulse poses. And that is telling men to check out of this system, this sick societal system that wants to castrate them, that wants to turn them into little girls, to stop playing this game, to check out, to turn themselves into capable monsters and fight back, push back, start telling the truth, take ownership, become a fucking man. That's the message that they have to silence. That's why they try to portray Elliot to be one of these incels like Cooper or Tomasi or Sharp or one of these other, these dudes that they really should be going after for, for indoctrinating these kids with this red pill bullshit, hypergamy is the problem. No, you're the problem. You're the problem. And Tate tells young men that. Stop blaming it on hypergamy because men do the same thing because we do. That's the message that's the problem. All of these guys who preach weakness and hopelessness to young men are making beautiful money on YouTube. Those guys are pushed to the front. But real men, real men that aren't afraid of this system, that stand to and say, fuck you. Dudes, this is the truth. Those men must be silenced. Men who tell men to stand up straight, take ownership, and make something of themselves have to be silenced. Because the way the system works is boys need to, to beat themselves into submission. Boys need to make themselves small so these strong, empowered girls can stand on their backs and necks and feel tall and, and, and strong. The real problem as Tate tells young men, get these, get these fucking feminists off your back. Get these losers off your back and out of your life and become something. I'm man enough to admit when I was wrong. And I have to say in this instance, I was, I was, I was mistaken about 
Andrew Tate's influence and the necessity of men like him in this era, in this day and age. Because while I don't agree with his delivery, I'm 52 years old. When I look back at my 35, 36, 37 year old self, I see a man just like Andrew Tate. The reason why it rubs me so, so wrong, the reason why it feels like sandpaper is because I've been on the bad end of the hustle. I've chased, chased the bag and lost something that money could never buy. I think Andrew Tate's overall message is a positive one. It's a needed one. And like Elliot Hulse, he should be protected and supported. You don't have to agree with what he says. But one of the things that you should really do is ask yourself, what about what he says bothers me so much? And in that, you might find out something about yourself that you didn't know or you've been hiding from yourself in the world. We need to free the top G. Out.